Today's video is going to talk about the biggest mistakes that you new players are making. The biggest noob issues I see, mainly in grouping up with random people and raids. I'm going to tell you these mistakes so that you can hopefully fix them. Or share this video to the noob friend you have so that they can fix their mistakes in raiding. If you like all my videos and like my content, hit the sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you know when I post a video. Let's go baby. Tip of the day. This is just a reminder for new players since that's what this video is mostly about. You may have not seen this on an earlier video, but this game has power level capping as you see right here. Every dungeon or floor or whatever has a power level cap. This is the time gate progression early game. You definitely do not want any type of penalty when going into a dungeon or a raid, etc. So if you have this hard giggity penalty right here, you're going to be taking 25% more damage and you're dealing 25% less damage. So if you have this penalty, don't go into raids. You want at the least slightly hard giggity. This means you have no penalty, but you also do not have a bonus. Whatever team comp gets you to this is what you want. You obviously want the bonus, but that's okay. You can do the raids with slightly hard giggity. You might get kicked in random groups, but if you get me, I never do. People are looking for bonus. But here's a tip. You can go into a dungeon with whatever team comp you want as long as you have a bonus. Once you're inside the dungeon, you then switch to whatever team composition that you want to use for the raid or the dungeon. And you still keep the bonus even when your power level goes down in the dungeon or raid. You want the bonus for 25% more damage and 25% less damage taken. The more you know. All right, on the new global servers, what are the biggest issues that I've seen? I feel like this is North America four months ago again. However, I'm going to tell you these things I see the most to hopefully help you or your guildies or whoever you share this with. How to be a better teammate. How to be a team player. Number one on the list is people going into raids with penalty like the tip of the day was today. Yeah, you can be carried, but if you're doing this in random pickup groups, then that's a problem. You're wasting other people's time. If you want your guildies to carry you, be my guest. But it's so easy to increase power level. I got a video on that somewhere. Just put in a little bit more effort and just get out of the penalty. If you get into a group with me with slightly hard giggity, I will keep you here. I'm not going to kick you. A lot of people will and pick up groups, but that's okay. As long as you do the raid mechanics, you're fine. Another noob thing I see is people going into the raid with weird comps. Weird team compositions of monsters. Like I've seen a cleef inside the dungeon with like three supports, not contributing any damage. It would be fine if he was like a full support giving tons of buffs to everyone else. But when there's mechanics and raids that you have to rush down an arm, or like Naraka, you have to get through Dragon's Roar in a period of time, the buffs either have to be right or you need to contribute some damage. What I run on Cleef the majority of the time is Naomi, Bastet, and Helia. But I always look at my raid. If two other Cleefs join me, I look at their team monsters and if they don't have any healers, then I bring in a healer. You always have to look and see what the other summoners are bringing to adjust your team comp accordingly. Unless you're doing a speed run and this early in the game that's somewhat hard, not too bad, but somewhat hard, then you got to bring the right kind of monsters. So this is going to be rough. As long as they keep me healed up, both of them, then I will try this the best to my ability. But it looks like I'm probably going to have to carry this as long as they get the defense breaks for me and then I'll be good. Let's just do as much damage as I can. But like that's another example, too, of some kind of new issues that happen. That Orbia should be wind 100 percent. Unless you have three other Orbias in here that are wind, you definitely should not be fire. 
Wind brings so much more to the team. With defense break, damage taken up, and you're doing more damage. But I see a lot of summoners stacking the same weapon element going into raid. You definitely should have variety, but if you're the only Orbia here, you should definitely be wind. See, you don't need bonuses. You can carry two people that don't have bonuses. Raids are all about getting the right debuffs on the enemy, or whatever raid mechanics there are. Just so you remember, these are neutral raids. They do not have an element. You cannot get an element advantage from these. So if you're a lonely Orbia, just go wind. If you're solo Cleef, go darker water. Kina is a bag of tricks for PvE raids. If you need buff strips, go wind. If you don't have an attack speed buff in your raid, go water. She's really the only situational support. But if you're stacking summoners, like if there's three Cleefs, Make sure you all bring a different element. One water, one dark, one wind, whatever. But you gotta bring variety. The other biggest thing I see is no defense break on raids. Defense break is one of the biggest things you need in damage for raids. This is for every single raid. Foggy Prison, White Shadow Castle. You need a defense break. If you don't, you will have issues. You can beat it, sure, but it's going to take a long time. And if there's not a defense break on the arm in White Shadow Castle, you may have issues. Also, people going ham on raids without waiting for debuffs or armor break, etc. You got to stop doing this on auto. You got to start manualing it. If you do it on auto, they're going to be dumb. The AI is dumb. Don't just waste all your mana when there's no debuffs on the enemy. If you're using people like Naomi, Argon, wait for those debuffs to drop. See, now that I have seven debuffs up with defense break a level four, then I can start hitting. And that's how you get the top of the damage meter without having an Argon. Another big issue I see is people just running natural five stars. They could be level 70 and awaken to like nine or something, but they have no skill ups and you can tell this because their power level is super low. Your priority in team composition and monster building is first obviously evolve to level seven. Then you want to awaken to level five. This will open up any new skills or modify skills that you already have. After awakening five, you want to max skill it. You can awaken to level 9 if you really want to, but your first priority before going past 9 is max skill. Even if you have shards of that unit early game, just put it into skills you can reset it later. Max skilling is the most important. Not only does it give you more power level for enhanced skills, but a level 1 shield from Bastet is 15% of your max health, only lasts for 7 seconds. Or a level 7 is 22% of your max health and lasts for 14 seconds. You choose what's better. This goes for damage dealers too. A level 1 does 395% attack. Level 5 does 790% attack. Skills are most important. But that's it for today's video. Just wanted to make sure to get this out so that everyone can stop making these mistakes. Know your raid role for whatever summoner you are. Know what monsters you need to bring. Check the other summoners to see what they are bringing and adjust to that. Don't go in the raids with a penalty. You don't need a bonus to win. Oh, and stop kicking people because they don't have a leaf. Goodness gracious, this leaf BS needs to stop. I get it. I understand. I think the leaf thing was a good addition to the game, but people are getting ridiculous. I totally get it, though. You guys get those materials, all right? If you like all my videos, sub, like, ding, ding, bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.